You know, I'm always talking about matching your residence, identify your residence, match your residence, and uh, there are funny, a couple of little funny uh, exercises that you do. You can do also to find out if you're using, for instance, your entire uh, drum. You've got two drums called lungs, and you've got one rib cage. So have you got all of that air down in there involved in, in, your, in your tone? When you make a sound, do you know if you've got it all involved down there or not? Is it working? I go ba 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 ba. <coughs> Let me clear up here. <coughs> Good morning. Ba 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 ba. All right, the air here is definitely involved. Because if I bound, if I pounded, the tone is disturbed. <coughs> Let's see. Ba 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 ba. Now let's try it over here. Ba ba ba. So you began to realize that my air box is poundable and I can pound on it uh, to find out if my air is really involved in making, in making the, the, the tone I'm singing. Ba, ba, ba. My entire torso, my entire rib cage, everything uh, is, is, is involved in making that sound, see? So it's one little thing that you can check when you're singing. People laugh at me, oh, it's ridiculous, blah, blah. Well, let's hear them sing. <laughs> do they sing with overtones or do all they do is sing in their noses or do they cover? What do they do? If they go, la, 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 no reaction, which means my air box is not involved and my throat is doing all the work. This sunshine is going <laughs> to... I feel like I'm going to melt or something, right? Oh, thank you. <clears throat> All right. So if I'm going to go, any note I sing, bah, 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 should be even fragile down in there. Bah, bah, feel that? Any place that I can bounce myself. Let's see. Let me check my uh, lower back. Can you see me over here? Look. Here's one of the old exercises. Right? So it's one way to check and see if you're getting all of your overtones out of your voice or not. And if all you're doing is... stops when I come down here. There's no resonance uh, left. So when you do this, you can almost establish your fach that way, your vocal category, because if the whole thing is ringing and uh, involved in the production of tone, it'll carry it like a bomb. And you know, when I did that, uh, when I was able to do that as when I was, when I was singing in, in Europe, and people go, cry, whoa, young dramatic tenor, young, they, they offered me an Otello in, in, in Wiesbaden, which is a state theater. And they offered me Otello when I was only 26. And that's another whole story. <laughs> I accepted it. And then hurt myself in the summer. I was supposed to open in the fall season. And I couldn't sing. I was wearing corsets and my ribs were all torn apart. And blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's another whole story. Ba, 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 ba. That's the one I want. Ba, ba, ba. Look how fragile it is. Ba, ba. place I uh, hit myself where I have air contained should respond in the voice. You should hear me go, ah. Uh, you have other ones where you bounce to make sure you got the, the, the bottom of your air column as low as you get. So you go, ah, 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 See? Now this brings up a certain approach to singing. Here's my voice. Ah, and there's my breath. Ah, shall the twain meet? <laughs> the old, the old thing used to be, never the twain shall meet. Well, I hope that's not our situation. I'm going to go down with my voice and bring my uh, back to, to, get, to function in a way where it, co it connects. So I have a leaning process and a support process. Depending on which one dominates, 
I'm either leaning or I'm supporting, right? So let's say I, uh, I, uh, Krista Ludwig, the famous German mezzo soprano, who had really a 50 year career, a magnificent singer. I, I, funny, I never liked her voice very much, the quality of her voice, but she was a great singer. She could sing anything and did and sang everything well. But she, she leaned her breath between her shoulder blades, which means she sang like this. <laughs> You can analyze for yourself what your back is doing when you do that. Here's my voice right here, connected. What does my back have to do to support that sound? Get the idea? So if I breathe way down below in my tailbone, my back squeezes in front of the bottom and works its way up like that until it supports me right between my shoulder blades. And then my voice goes down and connects to my shoulder blades. So then the breathing and the voice meet. So I know you've, a lot of you have heard that expression, uh, you, you sing on the breath, not with the breath. You sing on the breath. And we, we've, we've done this so many times where we prove that no air leaks. Now if I take that sound and I go, I'll say I'm going to use between my shoulder blades. I go, here we go. What is my back doing? When I'm singing all these phrases, think of all these phrases, right? You know, God, I can't get that darn thing to work anymore. Mm. What? Here we go. I think. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm going to put it between my shoulder blades. Ein Schwert schießt mir der Vater, ich fände es in höchster Not. You realize, if I do that, my back is coming up and my voice is going down and my resonance is coming up. And it's, it's quite a, uh, an involved process, but if you get it, there's no air leaking. See? Ein Schwert schießt mir der Vater, ich fände es in höchster Not. How do I do that? All right, what, what did my back do? So every time my ansetzen in German means to attack, right? But it's more like to set it upon. And every time you do that, it's funny how the Germans have words like to warm up is not warm up, it's to sing in. The word is einsingen. Ich muss mich einsingen, I've got to warm up. I've got to sing in. No. When I sing in, what happens to my back? Now, Benny Mirgini and uh, Giacomo Lali Volpi and uh, uh, <coughs> I've forgotten her name, the one who taught uh, Tibaldi, Carmen Melis, who taught Tibaldi, all studied with Antonio Cotogni, who studied with Persichini, he was the greatest teacher of baritones, without a doubt. He taught Matteo Battistini and Tito Ruffo and Giuseppe De Luca and all these people. Uh, they were taught to slide back and down. If I slide back and down, what is my back doing? Did my back come up to meet that or did it maybe didn't have to come up as far? See? What am I sliding down my tailbone? Now what if I'm like John Sutherland and I breathe up my rear end and I end up singing on my tailbone? What's my back doing? My back's no longer coming up. What is it doing? It's doing this. It's coming together and pointing down slightly. Pavarotti used to lean on his navel. So he'd go, no, no, no. <laughs> Boy, I'm so flimmy this morning. What happens here with my back when I'm singing on my navel? What did my back do? Did it squeeze? What direction did it squeeze? See that? That's all of my navel and my back is doing what? Got to look back there. Every action has an obstacle reaction. We got to find out what in the world is going on. I get all these ideas about placing my voice and what I'm supposed to do. And remember, none of these sing. Vocal cords, 
phonation, resonant, none of them can sing. All they do is their job. The thing that sings is your breathing. So you better worry about where you breathe, how you breathe, uh, what do you do with the breath, what's, what's the placement of the breath. A lot of people think of the placement of the voice, but the voice can't do anything. There's no way to place something that only, only is limited to vibrating, phonating, right, or resonating. And a lot of the phonation possibilities are useless. Oh, 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 nobody can hear that. Won't carry. Ah, 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 won't carry. Doesn't project. So some of them are absolutely useless. <clears throat> so you got to find the one that uh, that I like to uh, to to, uh, to tell people is the one that carries well. You have to believe me. You'll find out. But if they go ba 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 ba, the B closes my nose, and the A ah is an absolute neutral phonation uh, function. Ba 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 la la. What does my back do? Where is it supporting my voice? If my voice is going down and it's coming up, where do they meet? Is it a clash of the titans? Are you always in trouble down there? Are you always looking for a sound that is more than you can handle? And does it exhaust you? Right? What if I go? <laughs> What is my back doing? Where did my back come to meet my voice? So we don't, a lot of people don't sing this way. They don't think this way. They're always singing up here. Well, let's say I try, I try to sing here. Let's say. What does my back do? My back gets real narrow. The squeeze gets narrow. And it starts working its way up my spine. I get a real narrow. But that's me. That may not be you. You may feel differently, but I feel that things get narrow at the bottom and conserve the low part and squeeze, and it doesn't really work until I'm way up here somewhere. See? <clears throat> all of these have a different uh, reaction in the breath, and uh, although we, we can use any of them, we have to understand that the breath has to be allowed to find its function for that particular uh, way of singing. If I sing behind the glottal stroke, they go ah 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 ah, nothing's happening, right? And I go ah 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 oh 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 oh. Now, what did my breath do? What did my breath do to? I just made a tape about preparation. What does a breath do when you prepare to sing? Think about it. So if I'm if I'm going to phonate behind the glottal stroke, what does my back do? Got it? What am I doing? What did my back do? Where did they meet? Where did my voice and my back meet? It's like they're, they're a duet. <laughs> One makes sound, the other member of the duet does all the supporting, all the work. See? You sing, I'll push, right? <laughs> or something. The, the idea is, though, for you to understand that every time you make a sound, any, any time you do anything, the third law of motion in thermodynamics says, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. We don't always identify it that way. See, we should. When somebody goes up, everything has to go down. If I want my voice to go up here, I've got to go down and back. That's, it's the law, so it's not up to me. So if I, let's say I sing in, my, in that hung ah thing that I demonstrate as one of the instigators of my tapes, you go, I feel that, I feel that in my hip pockets, way down at the top of my buttocks on the sides. And it's going like this. See? And all I did was, was try to lift the voice over the hung line. I don't feel anything down there now. But boy, the minute I do that, I get, right? What about the pre-sneeze? Now, what is my back doing? Where did that one meet? Where did they come to meet? The uh, smelling the flower. Where is that one? <coughs> Get the idea? 
you take the voice and you go down and you, you let the response in your breathing come up to meet the voice and they work together. And depending on what you do and how you think and where you place your voice up, the breath is always there to respond to help you out. You know? The, the worst thing is the nose. If you get nasal, there's no response. There, there, nothing happens. It's just dead, dead in there. What if I do, uh, um, let's say, a couple of the chakras in yoga? What if I do this one? Oh, oh, the listening chakras, made famous by, uh, by uh, Maloki, the teacher who taught, who taught uh, uh, Mario Delmonico. And of course, Delmonico was the number one big dramatic tenor in the world, really, for when I was a young singer. And I had lessons with him almost six months, and he taught everything here. He used to go, oh, 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 right in the hole, right in the sternal arch. He'd go, oh, 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 oh. Now, if I sing there, La, 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 What is my back doing? What kind of response did I get in my back? Because I took the voice to hear, and somehow the breath has to meet me or I can't sing. you got to analyze your back what is happening every time you make a sound of any kind. And you'll find you'll get some bigger responses sometimes and some smaller responses. The smaller ones usually mean the voice is getting a little uh, nasal or the pillars of the voice sheets are coming and closing your throat. I remember the Corelli master class. Frank Corelli used to say, all the men are going to sing and sing it like a singing a straw. A squeeze, a squeeze, a squeeze. And why are you singing the nose? Why are you singing the nose? The, the Italians cannot stand the note. They hate the nose. And everybody was getting him going, nye, 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 and of course you had no response to the body at all. You know, you know why? Because the breath is brought up here and done this. Ah, see? All you need is the top of the top of the air. So most of the singers are, are literally supporting from right in here, somewhere. Very shallow. Now, if I do uh Corelli's Muller maneuver. This was his great demonstrated in the master class. And that Muller maneuver is when you suck in air against a half-closed glottis. And you go... <sighs> now, the resistance of sucking air through the closed glottis causes muscles to react way down where? Where in your body? <sighs> so now what you're going to do is use the breathing to influence the throat. So I'm going to go, <gasps> So where is my phonation now as a result of breathing that way? Richard Tucker uh, uh, taught me to use what he called the diaphragmatic lift, which is the belly goes in and your entire body opens up like a frog and then you sing like that. No, it's almost like a sigh. It's like sigh, but with a pumped up frog breath. Right, you go. Now I'm going to sigh. No, 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 if you can't find out, then pick one rib, or maybe one rib on each side. One rib is maybe easier to watch, and watch that one rib and see what it does when you're singing. Then, if you can identify it, look for that rib on the other side and see if it's doing the same thing. Because you know, when we're right-handed, left-handed, sometimes we have a dominant side. One side doesn't work as well as the other. So you've got to make sure they both work equally. And then you go to two ribs and four ribs, six ribs, until finally you get that idea of what is really happening down in your lower back. What do you think? You think you can you can uh, uh, identify the the support process in your back? See what is it? A lot of people sing uh, lean forward. A lot of people sing here. What if I do this? <laughs> well, uh, that's the way uh, UC Berlin, Tetrasini, any, any number of singers uh, uh, say, leaned on the sternum, and Lily Lehman leaned on the chest, and uh, Aureliano Pertile said he leaned on his pectoral muscle. Oh, boy, you really feel that one in your lower back going like this. But, of course, he was an Otello, big traumatic tenor. Uh, 
had a fantastic voice, right? How do your, wh how, how, what does your back do? Anytime you sing the way you normally sing, what does your back do? Some singers never use this or this or anything. All they do is sing from the back. Do you realize that? If you can identify the back, I can just sing from there. I didn't use anything up here. Didn't think up here. Didn't think of the resonance. Nothing. Right? Didn't lift, didn't, didn't squeeze, didn't narrow anything. I just put it down on my lower back and sang from there. Uh, if I want a specific spot, I better have that clearly in my mind. I keep talking about, you know, in, uh, silent singing. What sound do I want when I'm thinking? Can I imagine my sound? What if I'm happy? I want to make a happy sound. Oh, 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 what did my back do? All of a sudden, it picked, took me off the back of the chair like that, right? What did my back do? Now I'm going to be sad. What is my body doing? That was really vague. It's all over the place. See? We don't do anger. We leave the anger to the big, to big, to, 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 to big voices, the really dramatic voices. They, they, their vocal cords can stand uh, being dramatic. Ours can get wrecked. Uh, but anyway, if I do the, the um, spinto method and I don't breathe and I start singing, now that is not that I made that sound. It is that I sang with what was left of my breath and I have to squeeze it to get it to come out. So I'm really this time activating my back first. Don't breathe. I mean, I've got the old man sort of snarl anyway. My voice not pretty like it was when I was when I was young, but that really does exploit the snarl. It really is. That is a snarly uh, approach to sound. And it's very suitable for certain music, funnily enough. Because some music doesn't need to be pretty. It needs to be very penetrating, very exciting, very dynamic, right? Um, so all of these ways r require a certain uh, process in the back to be able to make them. And therefore, we must breathe and keep the back full all the time, right? Breathe, breathe. Caruso called it the massive power of the respiration required for great singing. So I'm going to breathe way down on my back, and now I can do anything I want to. Now what am I going to do if I go, Una I'm not sure what key that's in. Hold up. I may be right just by, you know, memory. Or so hold up. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm in the right key. <laughs> Luck. I'm not a perfect pitch. So I'm going to breathe. What did my back do? Sing a nice, sweet lyric line, and I'm, and I'm hoping my back will come along with me for the ride. See, what do I do? How do I do it? Certainly, I uh, certainly I took a breath. I wouldn't want to sing it without breathing if I don't get that whiny uh, sort of uh, you know spinto sound. <laughs> you know that doesn't sound like a young lover. See, sounds like maybe the girl's father. <laughs> so, you want to find all these different ways to use your voice. And uh, if you, one of the one of the great things about singing in Germany so much is I sang sixty four roles all together, and probably uh, fifty of them were were in Germany. So you're always getting a chance to sing and find out and learn how to do things. Your your chances to become a vocal artist are in, are increased if you survive. 
because you you almost required to constantly show all the different characters and different moods and all kinds of things. You know, uh, some music will will uh, uh, some music will sort of demand that you that you do something, and some of it's hard. Let's see. Laugh, Pagliacci, right? <laughs> You can play around with it and try different ways. Uh, you want to, if you really want this man is uh, is so desperate and so crazy, then he ends up stabbing his wife and her lover at the end and killing everybody, right? Uh, Carmen, Don Jose is another one. He starts off as a lyric tenor is trying to behave because he got in trouble back home. He killed somebody and had to leave and join the army. And now he's trying to behave in the first act and then he meets Carmen. <laughs> Gradually, you see this psychotic maniac, how he he loses control and goes back to thinking like he did when he was home when he murdered a guy. And now you realize that she is in danger. At one point in the third act, he actually attacks her and the, the guys, uh, the other smugglers have to hold the guy back. And, uh, you know, they used to pay the guys to hold me back. They paid them a little bit of extra fee because I was going to go after them. <laughs> they have to hold me real tight, right? And then the fourth act, he's, he's totally gone. He's totally psychotic. And he comes in and he's much calmer, but very, very serious. So that's real spinto music in that last act of Carmen. And he tells her, if you don't come with me, I'm going to kill you. And she said, all right, then kill me. He said, I, I must be free. I must be free. And guess what? He kills her, right? So... All the music in that opera is really fun to sing because you sing in different ways. Uh, and, you know, but it's, it's uh, uh, I've always thought that Carmen has got, there's something wrong with her too. She doesn't seem completely normal to me. You know, <laughs> I do wonder if she'd rather die than be held. She only, her, her, her affairs only last six weeks because she can't stand to be, poop, you know, uh, coop, cooped up, held back. All right, that's enough of that. You get the idea, okay? And uh, as I always say at the end, think about it. That'll be my, my, my phrase, <laughs> but my tombstone. Think about it. <laughs> okay, bye, guys.